Hello, my name is Dr. Selva. I'm a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at Makota Medical Center, Malacca, Malaysia. This lecture is entitled Case Studies on Clinical Diagnosis and Empirical Treatment for Endometriosis. My patient is a 28-year-old single lady. She attained Manaki at 12 years and has dysmenorrhea since Manaki. Periods are regular, heavy on first two days with clots. Pain lasts for three days, worse on day one and day two. She takes Panadol for her dysmenorrhea. Recently, she had more back pain. She had an MRI and was told to have a left ovarian cyst. She's seen by a gynecologist and told to have an ovarian cyst. I saw her in May 2021. Transabdominal ultrasound shows a uterus of normal size. She had an abdominal ultrasound done and the right ovary was found to be normal and there was a left ovarian cyst of the size of 2.69 times 2.42 centimeters. I performed a transrectal ultrasound so that I can see the organs clearly and the uterus was normal size. The right ovary was normal but there was a left endometrioma size 2.18 times 2.60 centimeters. MRI showed that the uterus was of normal size and there was a left ovarian cyst. This is the MRI showing a normal uterus and a left ovarian cyst. Now I gave her two options to undergo laparoscopic cystectomy for the endometrioma or to undergo empirical medical treatment. In fact, I told her that empirical medical treatment would be the best for her since she's single and has an endometrioma. Now, there are many questions with regards to empirical treatment of endometriosis. The first is, what is empirical treatment? The second, when should you do empirical treatment for endometriosis? What are the advantages and disadvantages of empirical treatment for endometriosis? What medication can be given as empirical treatment for endometriosis? Does empirical treatment reduces the progress of endometriosis? How long can you give this treatment? When should you stop empirical treatment for endometriosis? Are there medical legal implications when you start empirical treatment for endometriosis? Can GPs start empirical treatment for endometriosis? So I'll go through these questions one by one. Now, the first question is, what is empirical treatment? Empiric therapy or empirical therapy is medical treatment or therapy based on experience and more specifically therapy begun on the basis of clinical educated guess in the absence of complete or perfect information. So this means that we don't have a complete diagnosis but we still give treatment and we do this all the time. For example, if I have a patient who has fever after surgery I just start her on broad spectrum antibiotics and this is empirical treatment. So when should we do empirical treatment for endometriosis? Now this is ASHRAE guidelines for endometriosis. I'm going to use this uh, as a basis for my discussion in this lecture. Now in this guideline, there is a nice diagram and the diagram shows diagnosis of endometriosis, then explore a diagnosis for endometriosis and then proceed on to treatment. So let's look at it one by one. The first is diagnosis of endometriosis. Basically, we diagnose endometriosis by taking a good history. The patient will complain of pain during menses called dysmenorrhea. She may have pain during sexual intercourse, pain during passing urine, pain during passing motions, painful or rectal bleeding, hematuria, shoulder tip pain, pneumothorax, cyclical cough, hemoptysis, chest pain, cyclical scar swelling or pain if you have scar endometriosis. Some of them have fatigue, and also infertility is another, another common symptom. So patient may have, don't have any symptoms, but may come and see uh, complaining that she cannot able to get pregnant. So what happens when we take a good history? Then we will do an examination and then do some investigations. Now clinical examination, especially vaginal examination, can also elicit a lot of endometriosis. So many of these patients are actually single and Virgo in tecta, and so we can't do vaginal examinations. So we will be depending on imaging, and the commonest imaging is actually ultrasound, and, not, and sometimes we do MRI in patients to look for endometriosis. Now the imaging may look, we may look for features of endometriosis such as ovarian cysts, such as endometrioma or thickening of the uterosacral ligament. But in some patients, the imaging may be negative. So what do we do? So here it says that if the imaging is negative, it does not rule out endometriosis. So we may still suspect, suspect endometriosis even though there is a negative imaging. Now what about biomarkers? 
We all know that CA125 is raised during endometriosis, but in this guideline says that we shouldn't use biomarker as a method of diagnosing or even monitoring endometriosis. So once you have made a diagnosis of endometriosis based on your history, your clinical examination and imaging, you have two choices. The first is actually to do a diagnostic laparoscopy. If you do a diagnostic laparoscopy, you can confirm the disease and then you can proceed on to treatment. The second is actually to do empirical treatment of endometriosis, which means that we don't diagnose the endometriosis by laparoscopy, but proceed on to medical treatment. So in this paper, they further went on to say that while previously a laparoscopy was regarded as a diagnostic gold standard, it is now only recommended in patients with negative imaging uh, results and or where empirical treatment was unsuccessful or inappropriate. This means that there is, uh, diagnostic laparoscopy is no more mandatory to, try, to start treatment for endometriosis. The next question is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of empirical treatment for endometriosis? So first, let's look at the advantages. Uh, biggest advantage is early intervention. We all know that endometriosis is always diagnosed late. It is said that it sometimes takes 7 to 10 years before a diagnosis of endometriosis is made. So if we start empirical treatment, we are actually giving treatment early. The second is prompt symptom relief. So the patient will have prompt improvement of symptom, especially dysmenorrhea, if you start treatment early. The next is preservation of fertility. Now, this is a very important point when we start empirical treatment. And this is something that I will elaborate on later. What are the disadvantages? The disadvantage is a lack of confirmed diagnosis. So we are basing the diagnosis based on a history, physical examination and ultrasound and maybe MRI. And we may actually be wrong and we may be treating patients who are actually not endometriosis with medication or for endometriosis. And this is something I tell my patient very clearly, that uh, there is a small percentage of patients that my diagnosis is actually wrong and actually I'm treating uh, a disease which is not endometriosis with medication for endometriosis and are they prepared to take that risk. The second is potential side effects. Now we all know that medical treatment for endometriosis has got side effects. And the third is the possible disease progression. Now, when we give treatment for endometriosis, we must watch the patient carefully so that to show, to know that the patient is actually responding to the treatment and not having a disease progression. The next is what medication can be given as empirical treatment for endometriosis. Now, this paper looked at eight different guidelines for treatment of endometriosis. And these guidelines come from Canada, America, United Kingdom, France, and also the World Endometri Endometriosis Society and the European Society of Human Reproduction and Embryology. There are many medications can be given as empirical treatment for endometriosis. The first is progestin, and the progestin that is commonly used is Dinogest. The next is Medoxyprogesterone Acetate Injection and Levonorgestrel IUS or Mirena. Others are combined oral contraceptive pills, gonadotropin releasing hormone agonists, gonadotropin releasing hormone antagonists, aromatase inhibitors, denazol, gastrinone, selective estrogen receptor modulator, SERM, selective progesterone receptor modulators, non-hormonal treatments, complementary therapies, electrosurgery, acupuncture, and dietary and products and vitamins. Now, many of these uh, uh, drugs are not used as empirical treatment. We don't use denazol and gastrinone anymore. Selective receptor uh, modulator as SERM and SPRM, non-hormonal treatment, complementary medicine. These are not something that we do for empirical treatment. So is aromatase inhibitor and also gonadotropin releasing antagonists. Some doctors actually use GnRH agonists as an empirical treatment, but I personally do not use them because they are very powerful drugs. So we actually left with progestins and combined oral contraceptive pills. And when we look at this, I generally do not use Mirena or Levonorgestrel IUS for my patients because many of my patients in this category are actually Virgo Intacta patients. They are either single or uh, uh, ladies who have not had sex before. 
I also do not use medoxyprogesterone acetate injection because it's a powerful injection which is given every three monthly and it can actually pro, uh, noted to suppress fertility. So the drugs that I will use are either Dinoges or combined oral contraceptive pills. Now let's look at Dinoges and oral contraceptive pills and see how they benefit patients. Now this is a study entitled, Is Dinoges the best medical treatment for ovarian endometrioma? Results from a multicentric case control study. In this study, 81 patients with ovarian endometrioma were evaluated. 40 patients were given 2 mg of Dinoges and 41 patients were given cyclic oral estroprogestin, ethanol estradiol, 30 microgram plus Dinoges 2 mg. So the aim of the study was to see the effect on of the treatment on the size of the endometriotic cyst. Now it was shown that the size of the endometriotic cyst was significantly reduced in the dinogest group. The mean, the mean cyst diameter was 52 in the baseline and 32 after 6 months. It was 75% reduction in the dinogest group compared to a lesser reduction in the oral contraceptive group. So the decrease in the size of the endometriotic cyst observed in the woman treated with progestin, only progestin could be noteworthy as it may reduce the negative impacts on the effect on the affected ovary and avoid surgery. So this study clearly shows that patients who receive Dinoges only have got a better chance of reduction in the size of the endometrioma compared to combine oral contraceptive pills and these oral contraceptive pills contain estradiol 30 microgram and dinoges 2 milligram. So does empirical treatment reduces the progress of endometriosis? Now in this endometriosis consensus in Strasbourg in uh, 2022, they came to the conclusion that hormonal medical therapy or pregnancy or menopause only inactivate endometriosis. It doesn't kill it, it just inactivates it. So during medical treatment, some 10 to 30% lesions progresses. Therefore, during treatment, at least a yearly follow-up is necessary and ultrasound should be done. In another study entitled Medical Treatment of Ovarian Endometriomas, a prospective evaluation of the effect of Dinoges on ovarian reserve, cyst diameter and associated pain. In this, in this paper, they looked at 32 patients with unilateral endometrioma associated with pelvic pain and they underwent six months medical treatment with Dinoges. So before treatment and at the end of six months of the treatment, the patients underwent evaluation of the endometrioma diameter and uh, AFC at transvaginal ultrasound and the measurement of AMH and evaluation of associated pain. They found that the size of the mean cyst diameter, there is a reduction after six months. But what is more important is that the AFC of the affected ovary improved from 4.2 to 8.6 after 6 months. The AMH did not change significantly from the baseline at the end of the treatment. So this is interesting because even though the patient has an endometrioma, her enteral follicle count, AFC, actually improves while on Dinoges. So medical treatment with Dinoges significantly reduces endometrioma diameter and associated with an associated pain, whereas the ovarian reserve appears to be preserved and a significant improvement of AFC and no significant change of AMH. So what does this paper tell us that Dinoges will not only uh, in, decrease the size of the endometrioma, it will also preserve fertility by improving AV, AFC and also keeping the AMH stable. This is in contrast to if we do surgery. If we do surgery, do cystectomy on the endometrioma, then there is an obvious decrease in AMH. So in patients who are single uh, who, or who do not want to conceive, this will be a good way of treating endometriomas because uh, we can actually preserve the fertility and consider surgery later after the patient uh, uh, get married and try to get pregnant and if she still cannot get pregnant then consider surgery. So how long can you give this treatment? Now both Dinoges and combined oral contraceptive kills can be given as long as you want and it is usually given until the patient wants to conceive. When should you stop empirical treatment for endometriosis? There are several conditions in which you might have to stop empirical treatment for endometriosis. The first, of course, there's no improvement of symptoms. If the patient's pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea is still persistent, then we may have to stop uh, considering empirical treatment and consider surgery. 
The second is there's no reduction in the size of endometrioma. The third is there's a suspicion of progression of the disease. And finally, if the patient wants to conceive, of course, if we want to conceive, we cannot give any form of hormonal treatment. Now, this is the diagram from the same guideline that shows that if the patient is, has infertility, hormonal treatment is not recommended. You can either do surgery or straight move to IVF. And if you do surgery, then you can uh, uh, help the patient to conceive by natural conception or do IVF. Now, this patient that I told you all earlier, what I did is that I gave her Dinogest and she took the Dinogest for eight months until end of 2021. Unfortunately, she stopped the Dinogest because of side effects such as bloating and headaches. And this is something that we need to tell our patients that the, the, the uh, mild side effects that occurs during, during medical treatment uh, outweighs the benefit of uh, the treatment that is preservation of fertility and reduction of endometrioma. Now, I've not seen her since uh, the first follow-up. Next is, are there medical legal implications when you start empirical treatment for endometriosis? This is something that al I've always worried about. So it's important to properly document uh, as to why you started the empirical treatment for endometriosis because the patient, we don't want the patient to come back and say that we uh, delayed her treatment by not performing immediate surgery. And I'm wondering whether we should take consent. I've not been doing taking consent, but whether we should take consent when we do empirical treatment for endometriosis. Last is, can GPs start empirical treatment for endometriosis? The answer is probably yes, but I think that if, one, uh, if the a GP is considering starting treatment for uh, endometriosis empirically, they must be sure of the diagnosis and the reason for starting the treatment. And preferably, they do a joint management with a specialist. So many, many a times when I make a diagnosis of endometriosis and start empirical treatment, I will send them back to the general practitioners to manage the patient and follow the patient up. So in conclusion, empirical treatment of endometriosis should be considered in patients suspected of having endometriosis. There is no necessity to perform laparoscopy for all patients suspected of having endometriosis. And uh, this was the gold standard before, but now we can, without laparoscopy, start patient on medical treatment. So it is suitable, especially for patients who are not trying to conceive. And I think this should be the first line treatment for patients with small endometrioma who are not thinking of conceiving because this will help to preserve their fertility. Dinogest is a superior drug when starting empirical treatment for endometriosis. The alternative to Dinogest is actually oral contraceptive pills, but I've shown clearly in the paper that actually Dinogest has a better outcome in preserving, uh, in the preservation of fertility, as well as improving enteral follicle count and reduction in the size of the endometrioma compared to oral contraceptive pills. Careful monitoring of patients is necessary when empirical treatment is commenced. This is important because there is a small percentage of patients that uh, empirical treatment may not work and there may be progression of the disease. And in these patients, we may have to stop the empirical treatment and take them for surgery. Thank you.